Hey guys, it's David with Cars and Code. In this video, we're going to actually implement view model first navigation. So when we go to one view to another, each view model is going to be navigating by use of another view model. So in order to do that, let's first create a iNavigator class. Um, so iNavigator is going to be our, our navigation. That's going to have a one-to-one -one correlation with the iNavigation object that Xamarin Forms has, or an iNavigation interface, I should say. Um, so every method that the iNavigation has will have a corresponding one in our iNavigator. Um, the only difference is our iNavigator is going to use a view model, whereas the iNavigation that Xamarin Forms provides is a view-based navigation. So let's first create that interface iNavigator, and then we'll create the object Navigator. Um, in order to do that, we're going to create a new folder called Services. So our iNavigator, I already have created these methods, so I'm just going to paste them in so I don't have to do a bunch of typing. So we're going to have our pop async, pop to root async, and then push async and push modal async. So we're going to add this using, and now let's actually go create our navigator object that implements this interface. Now our navigator object is going to need two other objects to do its work. First it's going to need the iNavigation interface from Xamarin Forms so it can actually do the navigation. And it's also going to need our view factory so it can create the actual pages to use with Xamarin Forms iNavigation. So let's inject these into the constructor. Now our iNavigation interface is going to have to be lazy and I'm going to explain why that is a little bit later. Now let's just create a private property here to return navigation.value so we don't have to be typing in navigation.value every time. Okay, now we just have to implement these methods. So let's go and implement the interface. So in pop async, it's pretty easily just await navigation.pop async. Now we do have to make this an asynchronous method. Pop to root async is going to be very similar. Now we get a little bit more complicated with our push async method. So this is going to have our T view model, and our T view model is going to be a class and an I view model. Now here we can use our view factory to create our view from the view model. And then we can just use the navigation object to push that page. And we can do pretty much the same thing for push modal async. So now we have our navigator object finished. So let's go and actually add it to our bootstrapping. So if we come over to our autofac module, here we can actually add our navigation here. And the last thing we're going to do is register the iNavigation object of Xamarin Forms. And this is why we're going to have to do it lazy. Um, this bootstrapping is going to be happening before the application is actually loaded. Because if we look at our bootstrapper, our configure application is done here later. So what we're going to have to do is register it lazily, and this is how Autofac is going to let us do it. Now what this is saying is, as soon as we require this iNavigation object, we're going to come over and run this, this method to get it. And all we're going to have to do is do our app.current, grab the main page, and the navigation of that main page and we'll return that whenever our iNavigation gets injected somewhere, which is going to be in our Navigator class. So now that we've done that, we actually have to add a navigation page to our application. So in order to do that, let's come over to our Bootstrapper, and here we have our Configure Application method. And previously, we've just been creating this main page and setting the main page of the application to our main page. But we want to put a navigation page wrapper around that page, so let's do that. And then we can just set the main page of our application to that nav page. So now we have a navigation page wrapping the main page of our application. 
So the next thing we're going to do is we're going to create a new page to navigate to. So let's create a settings page that we can use later to actually edit some settings of our application. So first let's go over to our main page.xaml and in here we're going to add a new button uh, to go to the settings page. So we have our new button that's going to say settings and when we tap on it it's going to call this settings command that we don't have yet. But before we create the settings command let's go and actually create this new settings page that we're going to be using. So in our pages are views so we're going to come over here and add a new settings page. Now our settings page we're just going to have one label and our text is going to be binding to a variable on our view model called main text. This is just to show that our new binding is going to be set up correctly. So now that we have our settings page done, let's create our settings view model. So this is just going to be a public class and we're going to again inherit from base view model. And there's just going to be one property on here called main text that's going to return settings. Okay, so now we have our view model and our view. So now let's actually set it up in our bootstrapping. So let's create a new module called settings module where we're going to register all of our classes. Now this again is going to be an autofac module class. I want to override the load method as before. Now in this load method we're just going to be registering our settings page and our settings view model. Now we can register these as single instance, so when a person leaves the page and comes back to it, it's still going to get the same page and the same view model, uh, which depending on the page sometimes is what you want and sometimes it is not what you want. In this case, the settings are not going to change behind the user, so it's going to always be the same whenever the user comes back to the page, so we're going to register them as a single instance. Now that we've done that, let's actually call this settings module from our bootstrapper. And then we have to come down here and register the new views with our view factory. And the last thing we're gonna have to do is come back over to our main view model and add that command. So in this command we're gonna have to use our navigator object to push the new view model. But at first in order to get that we have to come back to our constructor and inject that navigator object. Now we can use that navigator to go to our new page. Notice we are navigating to the settings view model for view model first navigation. So let's try running this and see how it works. So here we have the, the page again. We can hit calibrate and move the data around like normal. But now we also have the settings button. And if we tap the settings button, we can go over to the settings page and we can see we have the binding set up correctly. So we have the settings text being displayed here. So that's the end of this video. I hope you all enjoyed it. I will see you next time.